All right, guys, before we get into today's episode, the giveaway for the 64 Beetle is now over. Thank you guys so much if you guys went to theludwigsgarage.com to get your key ring. Going to be doing the drawing at the end of this week by or around April 13th, and a winner will be announced shortly after. I'm super excited to see who goes home with the 64 Beetle. Still have a few things I wanna button up on it before it's ready to go, but I have really enjoyed my time with this car. But today we're working on the 1000 SP, so we're about to dive into that. Let's get into today's video. What did we just found find? It. What did we just find? The latest issue of Autostrada magazine. So they said that this was on newsstands and oddly enough, it's in newsstands here in Chattanooga. Autostrada magazine has sent a handful of copies to me, but they haven't gotten here yet. And the editor emailed me like the PDF online version and I decided to wait because who can walk to a magazine or bookstore nowadays in 2024 and like go find a magazine that they're in? You know, that's crazy. Luckily they have it here going right to the table of contents. So cool. My good friend Kyron took all the photos and my good friend Dave Thomas did all the writing. So cool. Great photo of the Corvair too. I love a rear quarter shot of that car. Photo quality and page thickness is amazing. Got the Corvair, the 700, some Auto Union photos. More 700, rolling shot. Lots of words too, very photo heavy, but lots of words. Final page Corvair and even a BMX photo. So this is the spring 24 issue. They do them quarterly. This is a Barnes and Noble that we're in now. So if you're close to a Barnes and Noble or any other bookstore in North America, go check out the spring 24 issue of Autostrada magazine, buy a copy, tag me on Instagram, tag the article, let me know what you guys think. So huge thanks to Autostrada magazine, Kyron and Dave for the opportunity. Very cool. All right, guys, we're back on Auto Union 1000 SP content today. I'm multitasking as always, the laser machine is running. And if you're a Mark IV Volkswagen guy, I am, I think for the fifth or sixth year, making the Wookiees in the Woods wooden plaques. So these are the awards for the Wookiees in the Woods show. They drive the tail of the dragon and get together in the Tennessee, North Carolina area. It's a huge show. So if you're a Mark IV or any generation R32 fan, you've heard of Wookiees in the Woods. So it's really cool to be a part of that show in this way. And Charles, who you saw on the last episode, is a huge part of that show as well. Every year he brings an R32 and this year, is a very special R32 because if you saw the last episode on my channel and the last episode on Charles's channel, I flew out to North Carolina to help him bag his Mark 7 R that he's RS3 swapped and given a quick little hint at the end of that episode why we bagged it because he's putting a body kit on it. It's a rare one, it's an expensive one. Go check it out, go watch his channel. Man, we are trying to get more progress done on the 1000 SP Beetle Pan project. The last time you guys saw this car on the channel, we finally got the 5x120 and 5x130 setups on the pan. I did stay drum on the rear, and I know that kind of requires more work. Yeah, getting all the hardware, wheel cylinders, adjusters, spring hardware kit, yeah. I, yeah, it's a lot of work. In hindsight, should have just gone the disc in the back. I didn't, we're here now. I deserve the roast, but honestly, the Corvair and the 700 are still drum brake all around. Yeah, you gotta adjust your shoes every now and then. I'm not that concerned about it. Now, one more thing we're going to have to address in this episode, probably before we actually set the body all the way down on the wheels. These Everesto towers are taller than the factory towers on the Volkswagen Beetle beam. And that is so you can body drop your Volkswagen Beetle. The taller the tower, the lower you can go with the car. I test fit the body down over the pan with the stock beam. So when I put the Everesto beam on, we realized these towers are too tall. This is the part of the engine bay that's in question. The towers are hitting here. And as you can see from where the hood sits, 
we don't have a lot of space to work with. This side over here had a huge dimple in it for a canister that sat here. So I've already started cutting that out to just see what kind of space I need to basically cut out of this side to allow the towers to come up through and not go too far, but let the body sit down on the pan where I really want it. So really before we get the wheels on and start setting the body down as far as I want to set it, we're going to have to address this. I still need to trim a little bit more here. And unfortunately we're going to start cutting here. There we go. Nice. Okay. All right, so what I did on this side, unlike the passenger side, because of that huge dimple where that canister was, I had to take that whole section out of there. This side, I decided to just cut three sides and fold it up. So I could utilize some of that material if I used it to box it in with, and I, I could just bend and fold that up. I mean, I might end up taking it all, who knows? But for now, I just made three cuts and hammered it up somewhat level with where I need to keep a material. Like we cannot go into this because that's the groove that the trunk seal or what used to be the hood seal actually lays in. So we can't get rid of that. Now that we have that relief cut there, let's set the body back down. All right, Epsilon off. I went and picked up some of these 5 16 thick multi-pattern free floating spacers just so we can see what we need for offsets on this car. All right, so I think it's pretty obvious from the get-go that we are not going to be able to get this. Yeah, we're hitting the spring plate now and we're not even up against the mounting pad of the drum. And it looks like we're more than 5 16 away. So I am going to be surprised if a nine and a half inch wide wheel can fit in the rear, but it's what we've got. So let's see. Okay, so even with a 5 16 spacer, it wasn't enough to get that rear lip away from the spring plate. So we've doubled them up, which gives us 5 8 We're just playing here, but obviously 5 8 might space us out too far to get the body down over the outside lip of the wheel. Okay, so with the 5 8 spacing, the thickness of the center of the wheel and the length of the threaded shank on my lug studs, we've run out of length to get to the drum. So we can't bolt the Epsilon on with 5 8 worth of spacing with these length shanks and I don't know if I've got anything else laying around so for right now what we're going to do is we're going to put a straight edge against the drum and we'll measure to that spring plate to get a good idea what I have for rear backspacing allowance essentially put a less than five and seven eighths I'd say five and three quarter to be safe okay so since the epsilon isn't going to work we can't use a 16 inch wheel which is closest to what I want to run for an overall diameter in this car that I have here in the shop. But before we go to the 13 inch wheels, which only gets us offset and width measurement, I've got one more five by 120 wheel here with a far negative offset. And that is the Kreger SS's. Now these wheels, a lot of you guys have talked about missing being on the Corvair. Uh, so I do have a pair of these still, they're 15s and they're only six inch wide. So they're a big negative offset as you can see with the huge lip so we'll mount these up and we'll see what this gets us on the space we have under that auto union body these things are so heavy since the 1960s Kreger has made these with an aluminum center and a steel hoop and the way they weld them together is just crazy there's like an insert that goes into the aluminum center that has a steel plate on it that gets welded to the steel rim essentially of the wheel okay so I have a pretty strong magnet here I can roll the wheel with it. Now check this out on the center. Nothing. I think this is gonna poke out too far. I don't know if this is gonna clear the body. Okay, we're on and we are, <laughs> we are three and seven eighths inches away from that spring plate. We're about four inches away from that spring plate. The rear Kregers I had on the Corvair my father and I first finished that car were some original 1960s crackers that my father had. I bought these new from Summit Racing in the 15 by six. I think the rears were 15 by seven, but since I have two, we're gonna put one on the front as well. We'll set the body down. We'll load the suspension. You guys are about to leave comments uh, down below as to whether or not you're gonna to wanna to see Kreger SS's 
on a 1960 Auto Union 1000 SP. This body dropped on air suspension. <laughs> This looks like it's gonna hit, right? Well, look up in here. We have space. And if you guys know beetle rear ends, especially swing arm rear ends, you'll know that these things camber aggressively. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a floor jack underneath this side axle and load the suspension. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna see this outer lip escape away from this fender altogether. That is not even a millimeter. All right, so don't get too excited yet because we haven't set the body down over the pan all the way yet. We still have inches, inches to go with the body and already the wheel's starting to disappear up into the wheel well. I knew that we weren't gonna be able to see what kind of wheel would be underneath that rear, but that is just ridiculous. So if we think of another inch or two worth of rubber, we go right back to the idea of cutting the bottom half of the sill off to make the rear and the front of the car look lower. So that's kind of been in the back of my head. We are taking the pinch welds, that's obvious, but we've got the body right down about where we want it over the pan now. we're already hitting the lip of the fender well on the lip of the wheel. So this hasn't been rolled or cut or anything like that yet. Obviously this is the first time we've been test fitting wheels, but that right there is what's gonna hold us up with this offset wheel. It's really hard to say that Kregers wouldn't be the move on this car. And actually seeing a 15 inch wheel in that wheel well isn't as small as I was expecting. I was expecting that giant wheel arch, especially compared to the rear, was gonna need a 16 or 17 inch diameter wheel in there to really help fill that well out. But man, a 15 might be it. The thing that'll really help with going 15s with small tires, even with a 15 inch wheel, we're real close up in there. Depending on tire size, we're gonna take up a lot more space up in there. So this might be the real deciding factor as to whether or not I go 17s all the way down to 15s. How cool does that look? Now, unfortunately, unlike the rear, the front beams in these Beetles do not negative camber. They're not an independent front suspension. Man, leave down in the comments below if you guys wanna see Craig or SS's on this car. 15s, because they still make these wheels, we can order a different offset, different width front wheel. So we could make them work. All right, so hooked on to the trailer and I'm actually putting the Mercedes inside the trailer. Working on moving everything around in the shop. I'm gonna pull the Beetle in next because we are expecting a severe tornado weather warning tonight and up to two inch hail. Two inch hail. That's bigger than a golf ball. So I've got the Corvair on dollies and moved it as far over against the BMW 700 as I could. Got it real tight in there. Mated the auto union onto the pan once again, which takes forever to get it supported just right and get it off the lift arms at the same time. And got that shoehorned over in the corner. So basically that is hopefully allowing enough space to pull the beetle in here, pull that in real tight here, and I'll back the truck in here. So everything's inside, man. The other two car garage holds Kayla's SQ5 and her Porsche 944. So essentially, we should have everything inside except the poor fastback. But to be honest, I mean, it already looks like it's been hit by two inch hail or meteorites. Keep your fingers crossed for us down here in South Tennessee and everyone else for that matter to stay safe tonight. Hopefully there's no tornado touchdowns and no major damaging hail. All right, guys, next day, 
avoided all tornadoes, luckily avoided hail as well, got everything tucked away. I took one of the Epsilons off the Corvair once more because we didn't put it up front. And it's almost a tease that the fronts look like they're going to fit. This is a 16 by nine and a half with a 205 40 on it. I don't think I can fit a nine and a half inch wide wheel anyway, but certainly not with those specs. All right, well, I think 16s will be the move. All right, guys, we met up with my good friend, Dave Smith, with this bagged Panamera. Thing is so sick. I'm gonna go get some food. A couple of black German luxury sports cars. His 20s are making my 18s look tiny. All right guys, so the last bit of this episode has kind of skipped around quite a bit. We just did like an invite cars and coffee here at the shop. We had a lot of friends in town this weekend, so I really wanted to get a bunch of people together here at the shop. Time to tell me that. <laughs> there she is. I'm sure he was. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like. We catered coffee. Huge thanks to my friend Tyler for roasting some coffee for us. And we catered bagels from Honey Seed Bagels right here in Chattanooga. So huge thank you to all of you guys who came out and hung out with us here at the shop for the morning. We're cleaning up now. Coffee's all kicked. We've kicked all the coffee. Almost all the bagels are gone. Gave me a good excuse to spend the last few days deep cleaning the shop. All the workbenches, all nice and scrubbed and cleaned, swept every nook and cranny. But super grateful for all my friends and everyone that came by. Oh, it was a great morning to hang out with everyone. That's it for this episode. It was supposed to be live last Thursday. It was supposed to be live today, which is Sunday, but you're seeing it on Monday. So stay tuned for the winner of the 64 Beetle. We're gonna announce that soon. I'm leaving for California in a week. We're gonna be building a car out there that all of you on the Patreon know about but for everyone else you have to stay tuned for the next few episodes as to what's going on out there but if you want to know now the patreon link is in the video's description below but that's it for now thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you in the next episode